Hi, it's Billy. Today is Billy's Bay Tips. It's winter. There's not much going on, on the beach. The lug have moved off. The ragworm have turned into green string. And the only thing that's pretty much left is shellfish. So one of the most common shellfish on the shores is the mussel. And uh, yeah, there's always a lot of it because it's pretty hard to use. So today I'm going to show you some tips how I deal with mussels and process them before I go fishing. So we get right into it. <clears throat> this is what we're aiming for. Now I place these in a bag and I freeze them so they're ready for the beach. Just get them out, take them off the the stick. It's a little barbecue skewer. And uh, you just slide it off when it's frozen, cut it into sections the size that you want. You already have done the elastic on them. So it's much easier to handle. So to start with, how do you open a mussel? Now a mussel's got two sides to it. It's this, this um, concave curve and a convex one. So you want to start at this end here. It's always the same with mussels. You take your knife, this is a special knife actually. I should talk about the knife. It's blunt. I've taken it, I've run it up against the wall until it's absolutely useless. The only thing that's going on is a point. So that's all you need, a blunt knife for the change. So you sit it in the back here. Now you want to work your way down to about halfway gently so you don't split the mussel into two halves. So you go in the back here. This is, there is more ways to open a mussel, but this is the best way and the quickest way. And it weighs the least. You're the least likely to hurt yourself as well. You don't push, have to push hard. You just work the knife backwards and forwards until you feel the point. It's about here where it pops loose. There you go. Once again, you don't want to open up too much and split the muscle. So you just sever those two, I suppose, tendons. Run the knife down the inside, just like that there. Get that last connection there. And it will come away with very little waste. The muscles are different colours. The pale ones are males and the colourful, the pink ones, or the, the orange ones are females. Just a bit of muscle trivia. Trivia, sorry. You cut it away. And that's it. You put it in your dish. You're good. Do it one more time for giggles. It's not hard work. You don't have to push hard or anything. The reason why mussels are such a great bait is because they got a lot of scent, a lot of juice. But the downside is the prep time when you reach the beach. They're not really practical for for a beach to for a bait to take to the beach, you know. So you have to. I always prepare them before, unless I'm scraping them off the rocks as I go. Of course. Never do this with a sharp knife. You will be going to the emergency room. A hundred percent. That's what I'm saying. That's a female one there, the orange one. Just got a couple more to do now. Might as well do a lot of them over here. Just one more, you can see how quickly it goes actually, once you know how to do it, without salving it in yourself. This is why it's so important to use a blunt knife.
So that was four muscles in that short time there. What can you catch on muscles? Well, what I've caught in muscles is obviously cold fish go nuts for them. Cod, I've caught wrasse, I've caught dogfish of course, I've caught rays, a smooth hound one time, pretty much whatever, you know, so long as it's not a taupe or something, you're pretty much good, I reckon, or a horse or something. So you can catch oh, bass as well, yeah. A pollock, pretty much endless. One of those baits that will do a lot for you is plentiful. Lots of it about. You can nearly always get your hands on it as long as the tide goes out. So you're always good. It's it's been one of those baits that's helped me out so many times on my travels around Europe. It's always there. Every country as I've been, you can depend on it. As long as the tide goes out, the mussels are there. Some type of shellfish. Also, another good one is limpets. We never think about it, but limpets are a great bait as well. Load of scent, load of meat. I mean, yeah. Mussels and limpets. Throw on a lugworm or two. Strip a squid. Bit of mackerel. Whatever you got. You can bulk a bait up and make it a lot more interesting than it was before. So, mussels. Definitely one of my top favourite baits. The only problem is the prep. That's it. And also... To make life easier, if you're on the beach and you've got mussels, right? So uh, a lot of people use a bait needle. The only problem is then when you're putting the elastic on, <laughs> they go round and round and round and it's really irritating. So I came up with this. It's like a, a second bait needle, which I put over the end of the stick itself like that. Just like this. You now this stops it from turning. It's brilliant. So I put it up like this. You can see what I mean, right? Then I just kebab them on like that. Makes life so much more simple. So much more simple. Just keep on going like this. Get the bond there. Small ones, big ones. Just keep going until you fill it. You make them as long as you want them, depending how long your plastic bags are. So, I usually start with this one, with the wire one first, and then put it over the other one. Admittedly, you need quite a lot of mussels for a session, but they're very quick to collect. I mean, you can get a bucket full of mussels in under five minutes. Only take the big ones, it makes your life so much easier. Small ones is just a nightmare. But if you can't get anything else, just take the small ones. So that's that now. So now it's just whip it on a bit with a bit of elastic. You can go as mad as you want really. But what I like to do is go up one way like this in a, in a diagonal and then back down the other way. And then when you've got them all wrangled together, then just wrap them just like you would normally in a spiral. Kind of neaten it up a bit. And so when you cut it, they all just don't fall apart. You'll need to put more elastic when you've cut them and put them on the bait. But it's just for convenience. So you're not screaming and when the fish start biting, you're not baiting up when you should be lashing it out. You know what I mean? So that's that. Now we got to this stage, then you just pull out your other one like that. Now you've got your muscle kebab. Now obviously you can't back back this because it's got a point on the end of it. So you just take it and snip it like this. And there. And that's it there. No bother. Lovely job. So that's two baits. 
I mean, you could get far base out of these two pieces here with a little bit of squid or mackerel or whatever. Then you're good. I mean, you'll catch anything once you put a bit of mackerel on it or whatever. But, you know, if you just had mackerel, you're kind of cutting your odds in half because you you'd probably only catch something like a, a horse or a dogfish or something with just with mackerel. But if, once you put a, some mussels on it, you've opened up your um, horizons there for practically anything. Especially this time of the year. All you're going to catch is coddling and coley and stuff like that. Rass as well. Another great winter fish. Keep you busy. There's the coil on the end of it. I just wound it around it. I mean, you wouldn't need to do that. You could hold, just like bend it like, like that. And just hold it on with a rubber band or whatever. But for convenience, I do it this way. This is a, um, a one mil TIG rod. You can use whatever you want. I mean, you can get a piece of... You get a piece of foam, like polystyrene, and stick another bait needle in there. Whatever you want. Actually, that's, that's a good way. Whatever. You know what I mean? Piece of polystyrene, and then you stick a bait needle in there just to stabilize them. Then you pull the foam off the end of it, you're good. So you don't need that at all. It's just I had that lying around. <clears throat> so we'll make, we'll make one more. It's so great the way it doesn't twist around. That's the best bit about it at all. Oop. So for the last piece, you'll need a freezer bag or some other type of bag, a strong bag, because we're going to vac bag them for the freezer so they don't get frostbit. Everything you do helps. Just take them, place them in the bag. Bust me. I mean, you can put as many in there as you can. As many as you're going to take with you to the beach. You take your vacuum pump. You don't need any of these fancy things a lot of the time. This will do a job here. They're cheap. You can get them on, online. They're plentiful. And they do the job just like a normal one. keep them together there you don't need to do it too hard just get most of the air out and twist them hold on to it and then tie a knot in it that's it <clears throat> there's your mussels nicely processed for the beach take them with you out of the bag bam Lovely jubbly. So, coming up next week, hopefully, I'm going to have some fishing videos, some great stuff. Hopefully. If I don't catch, you're not going to see it. So, <laughs> let's pray we do. There's also some other great videos on my channel. Many of them. There's 47. Not all of them great, but there's a good few good ones out there. Some of my favorites is uh, Sperger King Spares. I like Double Dogs is great as well. Polex by Pollock. Many great ones. So, I'm Billy. This is Billy making bait. And as always, I will see you on the beach, brothers and sisters. Bye.